Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am still continuing answering people's questions from my mailing list. If you missed my last video, I announced that the next few videos, I am going to be answering people's most pressing questions when it comes to dealing with a narcissist and how to uh, help give you some tools that can answer some of these challenges. So Today, I'm talking about two topics kind of turned into one, which is number one, navigating new family dynamics when you have divorced a narcissist with your extended family. So what to do with the aunties, cousins, aunt, uh, uncles, grandparents, and so forth, and what to do if one or more of these people are actually also narcissists and how to handle this, especially around the holidays. And again, explain this to your children and so forth. So let's first start with the way that we are terming and 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 identifying these things. I don't want to make everything seem like it's all just in your head, but 95% of everything that's happening really is about your mindset. So if you continuously tell yourself, I've lost family, I've lost these connections, there leaves no space for a redemptive story to get crafted there because we're telling ourselves the story about how we've lost something in the divorce. We've lost something that belongs to us and that we are now not whole in some way. When you're divorcing and especially divorcing a narcissist, I have an entire video on the concept of divorce and a failed marriage, which I encourage you guys to go watch after this video. I will link it in the description of this one so that you have easy access to it. When when we are divorcing, especially in divorcing a narcissist, we need to understand that that thing is not for us. If we continuously tell ourselves, I'm missing out on this great connection, or now I'm I'm losing my family, and especially if maybe we didn't have a family growing up and so we married into a family, right? So I didn't only just get a spouse, I got an entire family. It can feel really difficult to to kind of let that go and accept that something even greater is coming into our lives. But the truth is that is exactly what is happening, but it is up for us to be able to receive that. We cannot receive something new, something better, something greater if we are constantly looking at what we are losing or what we are missing out on. So if it's like, oh, I used to have such great memories because I used to go you know, to my in-laws house over Christmas or you know, the kids were super close with their cousins that they don't see anymore, or whatever it is, when, you, when the narrative is only about the things that you used to do and the things that you don't have now, you are completely tethered to only one reality which is one that is no longer in existence and you are prolonging your suffering, right? There's a great saying that I love, which is that pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. You are choosing to put yourself in a place of suffering because you are not willing to say, hey, that thing was no longer for me. Yes, it's hard. I am I identify that I am going through a loss. I am truly going to go through a grieving process because I'm not just losing the things that I... I had in the past, but the things that I hope for in the future as well, I have to actually go through that process. That's a real thing. Everybody has to do that. But if you just stop there of like, I just have to grieve everything that I've lost because I've got nothing to look forward to in the future, you are cutting yourself and your future short. You aren't allowing anything to come to you. You aren't allowing that space that was left to get filled up with something that's even better. That's a fit for you. That's a true alignment for you. And so I really just first want to say mindset is so important. Please consider shifting your mindset in this moment because the things that that you have left behind pale in comparison to the things that line up ahead of you. That being said, your mindset is going to have a huge impact on the way you explain what's happening to your kids. So if you if you are saying to your children, well, we can't go hang out with, you know, auntie so-and-so and we can't go see our cousins anymore. You know, that that was a product or that was a relationship that just got lost in the divorce. If you're explaining it that way, how is that hopeful? How is that providing a safe place for your children to dream 
and to think about their future. We have to really think about the way that we think about things is going to be the way that we explain things. It's going to be the way that we demonstrate things and show things to our children as well. And so uh, in this moment, I, I would like to propose to you that if you can shift your mindset, you're going to start coming up with different ways to explain what's happening and help guide your children through this shift. So not denying what you're actually feeling. That's really important. You need to feel your feelings, right? You have to feel in order to heal. This is a scientific known. We must process our emotions and feel our feelings in order for our physical brains to give us the capacity to move on, in order for our bodies to release trauma, in order for our bodies to get out of fight, flight, freeze, or fawn mode. So we know that this has to happen. And uh, and when you, leading up unto a holiday, you already know, you already know it's coming, right? The holiday doesn't just pop up out of nowhere. We know when a Thanksgiving is coming up. We know when a Christmas is coming up. We know when a birthday or any other special event is coming up. We know these things are coming up. So instead of just allowing this thing to kind of sneak up on us, right, start taking, start being proactive. Hey, this, this season was usually a time when I was used to making memories with these people doing these activities. That is not a possibility. That is no longer in my realm of what a reality is going to look like for me this year. So what am I going to be doing instead? And what are my children going to be doing with me instead? So starting to plan in advance, right? This, it, it all goes down to your mindset because if you think, oh, I lost that, it kind of leaves you in this like helpless moment. If I don't have that, I can't have anything, right? If I don't get to make memories with those people, in the way that I want to make memories with them, then the whole thing is a wash, right? I just have to have a terrible holiday season. But when we have a mindset of, okay, that thing is gone. It was amazing for a season, but it's time for something new. It's time for something that's truly in alignment for me. It's something that's time for something that would truly honor me and honor my children. Then we create space. Okay, you know what? Who does that? So who does that very well? And who can I connect with Somebody you can do something with for that holiday. So maybe you want to plan this with your coworkers, or maybe it's more appropriate to do this with your friends or a mommy and me group or whatever it is that you have going on. Or maybe you don't want to do any of that. Maybe you want to start making new traditions and new memories. One of the things that we try to do sometimes when we're shifting and getting out of a situation with a narcissist or any kind of divorce situation is that we try to keep every single thing the same because we believe that, you know, stability is important, which it absolutely is. But the truth of the matter is that you are going to have a completely different life now. Your Things are going to be different. And so it's okay to say, I used to do these things. I used to have these traditions, but now I'm shifting and I'm starting new traditions. These are going to be the new memories that I make. This is a new season for me and for my children. And so planning in advance and planning the things that are meaningful to you, things that you know you are going to be able to make a memory in regardless of what you're doing. So for, for example, if it's the holidays and there's a holiday party that you really want to go to, but it's the day that your kids are going to be getting back from the narcissist house, right? especially if it's like right before, especially if it's an hour or two before that thing, chances are you're not going to be able to make the memories that you want at that party because the kids are going to be so out of sorts. You know that there's a transition period, which another great video for you to watch after this one is about switching time, right? Like the time that you're switching between parents. And I'm linking that video as well in the description of this one so you can watch it after this one is done. Um, it, it, there's going to be a, a transition period that you have to allow your children to have. And so why do you want to go to that holiday party? You got to think about the things that are really meaningful to you. Is it to catch up with those people? Is it to make a memory with your children? Is there some sort of event or some sort of thing that's going to be at that party that you think your kids would enjoy? Pick out the things that are most important to you and figure out how you can recreate that on a schedule that is going to work with you and your children. So if it's to see certain people and to meet certain people or to make memories with certain people, set that up on like day two or day three. 
of the time that you have the kids during the holidays. See what I'm saying here? You don't want to try to force the children to go do the things that you think you need to go do because you've always done them, because it's what everybody else is doing, because whatever the reason is, you need to think about what is really important to you in this holiday season or in this time time of your life, what, whatever it is. Maybe it's a, a birthday party or whatever, because you need to understand that if, you, if the thing that you're looking for is belonging, if the thing that you're looking for is connection, whatever it is that you're missing out on uh, by, by not going with your ex-family, then I want you to start thinking about how you can recreate that with the things that you have now and with the things that are actually going to serve your future. Because those things all serve your past. Those things are all tethers and anchors to your past. You want to start moving and building something in the future. Okay, so along this issue is what to do if you have to hang out or your kids have to hang out with the narcissist family who also are either narcissists or they're enablers of the narcissist and their behavior, right? One of the things that's, again, really important to know is that you cannot change the narcissist, not even for your children, not even for the benefit of your family. There's nothing that you can do that's going to make this person change. So instead of figuring out how to like get around the narcissistic tactics, I want you to think about the things that you can control and you can influence. You can equip your children with skills to set their own boundaries, with healthy communication skills, with a way to escape if they need, you know, time by themselves. You can equip them with the things that they can do. You cannot insulate them from any and all contact with their narcissistic family. And so I need you to understand that by trying to do that, you're actually hindering them because you're not equipping them with the skills that they're going to need in order to not only survive, but thrive in that environment. You don't want that environment to just wash away their identity whenever you're not around to provide that insulation for them. You need to know that this is going to be your children's family, whether you're connected or not. And so you can't be 24-7 around your children and you need to start equipping them with the skills. Yes, it is hard. Yes, it is difficult. Yes, it is painful to watch. All of those things are true. It still does not deny the need of what needs to happen in that situation for your children to be healthy, for them to be successful, for them to be whole going into these type of environments. One of the things that I tell my clients when I'm working with them about what to do with their kids is that providing them a stable foundation of connection is going to be really uh, beneficial, especially if you have younger children. Okay. This can be harder when you have teenagers and older kids, if that connection is not already established. But when you have younger children, it's very important that you establish that kind of heart to heart connection where you spend more time focusing on the foundation of y'all's relationship, of y'all's ability to communicate with one another than if they're picking up their toys and they're cleaning up their room. Yes, there needs to be order. Absolutely. There needs to be ground rules. There has to be stability and structure for your children. But before you get them into like work mode, before you get, did you do your homework and did you put away your things and did you do this? Before you get into that, start with the important things. Start with the basic things. Hey, how was your day? What was the most important part of your day? The peaks and valleys exercise is so good. Even little children can do this. Name the three high points of your day. Name the three low points of your day. The low points, pick one and choose one to become the high point of your day tomorrow. You can do this around the table every single night. Or as soon as they come home, sit everybody down at the table or on the couch and with a snack or whatever and do it. And then ask them, like, what, what was so challenging about that thing? Find ways to use the experiences that your children are already having at school or in daycare or with their homeschooling co-op or whoever they're around during the day. Even they're just their siblings or you. Hey, it was really hard when we had this conversation or we had this disagreement earlier today. How did that make you feel? Tie it back into an example or a way that you can help them structure their communication skills when they are with the other parent, the narcissistic parent, and especially the narcissistic parent's family when there's enablers around them. So use those examples, you know, when Sally, you know, did that to little Susie, how did that make you feel? What do you think should have been an appropriate action? If you could have done any action in that moment and had it turn out exactly how you wanted it to turn out, what would you have done? 
or what would you want to have Susie do I've done? Or what would you want to have Sally to have done? You know, you get them to start thinking critically about the experiences that they are having now. And they are going to be able to correlate that back to experiences that they have when they are not with you, when they are with the narcissist or with the narcissist family. Again, it's all about skill sets. Skill sets cannot be taken away from you. Protection can be taken away from you, right? Your, your, your little parenting bubble that you're putting your children in, as you should, can be taken away from you. But when you equip your kids with the skill set that they need to walk into any kind of environment, regardless of who's there, regardless of what kind of things are going on, and have your children so rooted and grounded in identity that they know who they are, and they can see these kinds of structures playing out amongst adults that they did on the playground when they were at school that day. It empowers them to be able to say no. It empowers them to be able to establish their own identity in their own way. Kids are very perceptive. And I think as adults, we kind of downplay this. We try to think that they're not as capable. They're not this, you know. Yes, they're not adults, right? They can't do all the things adults do but they're very perceptive. Think about children as they're developing. A good portion of their life is spent just receiving because they can't talk and they can't give out in the amount of they're taking in. They can't give out in the amount, like equal to the amount that they are taking in. All they're doing is watching and observing. They're very perceptive. We need to use the things that they are good at, the, the innate skill sets that they come here with to their advantage. Show them how powerful they are. They are the power, just like you are. They're powerful people. They make powerful choices. And so when you can start shifting your own mindset to see like, this is not a situation where you're just a victim of circumstance, where you're just a victim to you know, other people and what they want to do, regardless of how the court has ruled, regardless of how the narcissist behaves and the family behaves. You need to see this is an opportunity to structure and to help build up a child who will be so firmly rooted in their identity that nothing can shake them. So if you start shifting your mindset, you'll be able to better equip your children. And it will be less hardship for you and less hardship for them in the in the long run. If you are interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one to kind of adopt these things and hone these skill sets in, I still have a couple of slots open. There's only two open. And once these are filled, you will be on a waiting list for eight to 12 weeks until the next spot opens up. I'm only taking a certain amount of one-on-one -on -one clients at a time. So if you are ready to truly transform your life, I want you to click the link in the description and get signed up for that. Otherwise, I hope you are able to put these tools to use and I will see you in the next video.